गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ एच एस टू जीरो वन एंड ऑल्सो एनी अदर व्यूअर ऑफ माई चैनल हु इज सींग दिस वीडियो दिस इज अ सीरीज विच इज गोइंग ऑन एज अ पार्ट ऑफ द एच एस टू जीरो वन कोर्स कॉल रीडिंग्स इन प्रोबेबिलिटी एंड स्टैटिस्टिक्स एंड हियर आई रीड फ्रॉम द चैप्टर टू द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द चैप्टर टू ऑफ द फेमस बुक नाउ फेमस बुक द आर्ट ऑफ आंसरिटी बाई सर डेविड स्पीगल हॉल्टर The art of uncertainty: How to navigate chance, ignorance, risk, and luck. If you are a serious student of statistics, on or, or probability, if you want to say, definitely, if you are a student of statistics, this is a book you must be reading. And I uh, hope that the books would soon come to the departmental library at the Department of Economic Sciences, the IIT Kanpur, and the students of Economic Sciences can actually who are doing the masters can who are doing the course of HSC two zero one. can have an access to this book <clears throat> and i would also recommend the central library to have this book but i that would that would depend on them at the end of the day but the book is very cheap so not a big problem and hoping that there will be a paperback edition soon and any student of statistics economics whoever should put these two books the art of statistics by david spiegel holter and art of answer and these two books should be in their backpack if they are serious students of statistics and economics so in this book i am going to read from the second chapter of a very little part it is called putting uncertainty into numbers right so now most of the time we talk about things like what is uh, uncertain mane mane oh most probably this will happen oh no no there is no chance of such things happening so what do we mean by such vague statements that we keep on making in our daily lives so that's what he is trying to say through a story and stories are always good so on a sunday morning let's have a story so he says that we have seen how uncertainty is best or thought of as a relationship expressing your ignorance about something tangible but ignorance is not all or nothing and when we use expressions like such as likely and almost certain in our daily language we are essentially communicating degrees of uncertainty and a natural next step is to be more precise and put our uncertainty on a numerical scale this might have help, helped avoid a disastrous misunderstanding then he gives a story after fidel castro's revolutionaries took over power in cuba in 1959 The U.S. Central Intelligence Agency (CIA) for short plotted with Cuban exiles to overthrow the new regime and restore a U.S.-friendly government. By the time President Kennedy was inaugurated in January 1961, plans were well advanced. But when the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff evaluated the proposal for an invasion means of Cuba, they were somehow skeptical and recorded that it had only around 30% probability of success when brigadier general david gray drafted the report to president kennedy he translated these numbers into a fair chance by which he meant not too good now to a president a fair chance means let's take a chance right <laughs> but kennedy apparently apparently interpreted a fair chance as meaning that odds were reasonable and later gave his support to the invasion on 17th april 1961 1500 cuban exiles who landed at the bay of pigs on the south coast of cuba were met with strong resistance led by fidel castro himself over 100 were killed and most were captured The operation was a complete fiasco, a massive embarrassment to the United States, and led Cuba being drawn closer to Russia. Subsequently, missile crisis of 1962 became perilously close to a nuclear confrontation. In his book, Bay of Pigs: The Untold Story, Peter Wyden reports that it never occurred to Gray that not using a numerical probability might lead to misunderstanding 
the bay of pig has also been a case study in group think when dissenting opinions are silenced general taylor who carried out an inquiry into the disaster later told widen that there is a time when you can't advise by innuendos and suggestions you have to look him to in the eye and say i think it's a lousy idea mr president the chances of succeeding are about only 1 in 10 and nobody said that so if i told you that constipation i think which many people suffer from in india was a common side effect of taking statins in that i take statins every day now what proportion of people do you thing would suffer this complication if they took the drug when 120 patients taking statins were asked this question the average response was 34% but the true rate is vastly lower at around 4% the reason that constipation is officially considered a common side effect is because european medicine agency and the uk medicine and healthcare products regulatory agency dictate that any side effect with an incidence between 1% and 10% is labeled in the patient information leaflet as common and anything of 10% is very common so the example the example reinforces the bay of pig story in showing that the dangers of using words to express magnitude as they mean very different things to different people within the profession of the health community the assumption that the, the assumption is that side effects are rare and so even an incidence of 4% is considered common but this is not how the world how, this is not how the word is used in ordinary language common a rare a lot and so on are vague descriptions of frequency used in every day language is probability free even more common are expressions of uncertainty think how often you have said you say could might maybe perhaps likely possibly i have argued that it would be better to use probabilities if possible but since people may be reluctant to put their uncertainty into numbers and wish to use only familiar linguistic terms this raises the vital question what do you mean by the term likely on january 22 2010 pretty recent the uk terrorism threat level was raised to severe which is officially defined as meaning an attack is highly likely but what is the meaning of this highly likely in terms of numbers that is more significant in, in in to a statistician given the way people might interpret highly likely this sounds fairly terrifying so then home secretary alan johnson felt obliged to say this means that a terrorist attack is highly likely but i should stress that there is no intelligence to suggest that an attack is imminent fortunately there was no terrorist attack numerous studies have shown that way such words are interpreted can vary substantially between people and context for example when 5000 people from 25 countries were asked how they would interpret likely in terms of percentage probability the median or middle response was 60% but there was a huge variation with 1 in 10 response lying outside the 25 uh, outside uh, outside the wide range of 25 to 90% somebody said more than 90% somebody said less than 25% so so what is hap- happened that this vagueness has to be somehow quantified this vagueness had naturally led to attempts to standardize the use of such terms so at least there can be some agreement within specific context one of the most usually used translation was developed by the intergovernmental panel on climate change ipcc and it is shown here in table 2.1 you can read it 
you can stop the flow of the video and read this but i'll read it to you so if you say some but something is virtually certain it means that you are expecting 99 to 100% probability 0.99 right extremely likely is 95 to 100% 0.95 and more than 0.95 very likely is more than 0.9 likely is more than 6.6 .6 or 7 something like that 0.7 more likely than not then it, it's around slightly more than more than 50 percent right it could be anywhere between 50 and 100 percent about as likely as not it is between 30.3 and 0 0.7 0 0.66 unlikely even because it is between 0 and 30 percent and very unlikely event is 0 between 10 and 10 percent means 0 and 0 0.1 is the probability is around 0.1 exception in unlikely is between 0 and 1 percent that is something less than 0.1 very very unlikely very rare event basically so note that the median in, uh, the median interpretation of likely by public is 60 percent is not even included in the interval 66 to 100 percent mandated by the ipcc so 60% is not included in that interval of likely. It means, likely means it is 0.66 probability. 0 0.66 to something higher than that. More than, more than 0 0.66. So range is 66% to 100%. So 0 0.66 to 1, anything in between. And a general finding is that public interpretation of these terms is conservative in the sense of being nearer to 50% than the rules in the table. That is, see, we are always thinking, okay, something will happen or not happen. So it's always 50% for most case people, chance, 50-50 chance, chance, what we use in daily life. But in real operations, you have to be very precise what your term means. And it means you have subjectively ascribed some probability to this. So these are kind of, there's a subjectiveness also. You might not completely agree with what has been set up here. So, uh, so this is what uh, is there for today. I just got a new book from my bookseller, which is Essentials of Statistical Inference. I'm trying to look at it today and see what it is. But a lot of things have been linked up with Bayesian uh, statistics. Very small book published by Cambridge University Press. Has a lot of things written in a very... Uh, so, you know, I would say short and sweet way, um, but you, I think for reading this book, you already need a, a, a basic training in, you know, statistical inference, which but this course is all about that. Another book, because there are some biology students in the class, for them to have a book, look at the book called Chance in Biology. Anybody interested in probability should have a look that how biologists argue about chance, what do you mean by events in biology, what do you mean by complement of event, and all these things that we already know is given in terms of biological examples, which is very interesting. And because biology is a place where probability is heavily used, so this is some book, this is a book that one should actually read because uh, how the, how statistical ideas are used in biology has been given in a very very nice way in this book so this is a book i'll soon review for you as i am having an overall look at uh, things so with this let me end today's uh, sunday discussion and hope next sunday i can come up with something interesting something new and i would always invite everyone else to rather it's an open invitation to start reading probability because, because as uh, John Clark Maxwell had said that the true logic of the world lies in the calculus of probabilities. So thank you so much and I hope uh, that you have a good Sunday. Thank you.